The remaining bits and pieces of Pompeii is located near the modern suburban town Pompeii, spelled with one eye. Today, Pompeii is somewhere distant inland, but back in the ancient times, it was much closer to the coast. Pompeii is located 5 miles away from Mount Vesuvius. The city covered about 170 acres and the population was around 11,000. The weather is usually pretty warm, usually like around 70 to 80 degrees. There is not much information found about ancient Pompeii's climate, so we decided to look at the surrounding area's climate. In Pompeii, the statistics show that annually the chance of rain is always 50% or less. The highest chance is in the winter. The low temperatures in the winter is around 45 degrees, and the summer it can go up to around 87 degrees. The chance of snow in Pompeii is very low. According to the statistics, it says that it is around 1% and only in February. And that is all. Majority of the year, it is sunny. Seattle is the biggest city in Washington state, with a total area of 83.9 square miles. Despite the fact that people think Seattle rains a lot, the yearly average of rainfall for the U.S. is 37 inches, while Seattle's average is 36 inches yearly. Seattle's yearly average of snowfall is 11 inches, and U.S.'s average is 25. In the winter, Seattle's average temperature is around 36 to 49 degrees. In the summer, the average temperature is 52 to 76. Like Seattle, Pompeii was a seaport, and the communication that was enabled through the seaport and trade routes allowed for many more scientific discoveries at the time by introducing a hub of communication, bringing different ways of learning and discovery together. There was also the viaducts and sewer systems that allowed for a better lifestyle. The culture in Pompeii allowed people to have an upward mobility. There are examples of slaves who worked their way up to wealth. This could have induced scientific discovery. Places like Pompeii that exercise freedom and change can also be open to innovation through this. Slaves who work their way up the ladder could have influenced scientific discovery. Lungs contain alveoli, which are like tiny groups of caves that allow the exchange of gases inside the lungs. They diffuse gases into the bloodstream, taking deoxygenated blood and turning it into oxygenated blood. The alveoli are usually damaged by dangerous gases, such as those found in cigarettes. Alveoli are stretchy, allowing them to absorb oxygen. Smoking reduces its ability to stretch, thus making it harder for the lungs to absorb oxygen. During a pyroclastic flow, such as the one in Pompeii, the ashes and gases sear and choke off the lungs. This is how some of the citizens at the time died. Various chemical gases also damage the cilia. Small hairs that serve the role of filters for the lungs. Seismology is a scientific study of earthquakes and the increase of elastic waves through planet-like bodies, like Earth. Seattle and Pompeii both have a lot of seismic activity because both cities lay on a fault line. Mount Vesuvius at the time was an active volcano, and today, Mount St. Helens remains active as well. If you compare the 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption with Mount Vesuvius's, you will find that an earthquake occurred prior to both eruptions. The seismic activities cause the volcanoes to finally erupt. There are three types of seismic waves, body, surface, and normal. Back then, the people of Pompeii didn't have as much knowledge of earthquakes and eruptions as we do today. Nowadays, seismographs are utilized to measure magnitudes of earthquakes, but despite this, we cannot predict the date of an earthquake. Scientists have tried many different ways of figuring this out, but have never succeeded. They only have a general idea when one might occur, but it isn't always accurate. Tectonic plates are the basis of how volcanic explosions work. The thermodynamic properties of the earth causes the mantle to act like a moving river, pushing pieces of land in which those pieces are known as tectonic plates. Tectonic plates is the theory that earth's outer shell is divided into several plates that glide over the mantle, the rocky inner layer above the core, pretty much a sliding layer that's always moving under all the land we live on. These plates act like a hard and rigid shell compared to the earth's mantle. This strong outer layer is called the lithosphere. Mountains are formed when two tectonic plates grind against each other, forcing the land to shift upward. Earthquakes occur when two tectonic plates grind against each other, creating tension, and that tension is released. That's why in areas near fault lines, such as Pompeii, danger zones for earthquakes can be high. Due to the fact that magma is lighter than its surrounding rock, making it rise, volcanic eruptions can occur. Bubbles are formed from the dissolved gases found within the magma, which can push it with tremendous force. These bubbles help the magma rise and force eruptions to explode with extreme force. 
Earthquakes can also be triggered by a type of volcanic explosion. Moving magma, which can signal an upcoming eruption underneath the earth, can force rock and crust up, cracking the ground above, causing an earthquake, like the scenario with Pompeii. In Pompeii, the real killer was the pyroclastic flow. A pyroclastic flow is one of the deadliest things that can come from a volcano. Otherwise known as a pyroclastic density current, it is a flow of hot gas and stone. The flow can move away from the volcano up to a speed of 450 miles per hour. The gas can reach to an average of 1,830 degrees Fahrenheit. Pyroclastic flows are composed of fragments of ash, lava fragments, and gases that are too heavy to float in the air, so it stays on the ground, turning into a flow. Though all of Pompeii has not been unearthed, there isn't much drive to excavate what's still left, as a new problem is the preservation of what has been unearthed. Under all the ash from the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, everything has been preserved, but now it is exposed to all the elements, putting all the artifacts at risk of being lost.